and the beings that are there, that's our community, that's our peers. He says, from whence also we're looking for the Savior, the Lord Yeshua, who shall change our vile body that it might be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So that's what we're looking for. That's this is has to be up forefront in our mind. Uh, I have a quick question. What you got, sis? Uh, I just wanted to know. Um, I'm not, I'm not heard you say something about drinking. Is that not okay to drink? No. Well, if you got a problem habitually getting drunk, okay, then that ain't okay. Now, if you, you know, and see, the deep thing about it is the most high got to deal with you about, about that. Some people can't drink. Yeah. Some people do not need alcohol in their system. You know, some people can drink a little bit. You know, I'm not going to sit up here and tell somebody they can't drink. But I would say is whatever you do, just be in the spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, don't be in the flesh. Don't be carnal. You know, trying to get your drink on because you're going to get jammed up. Yeah. Some of the worst things I ever did in life was under the influence of alcohol. So I could say to everybody, you know, don't be getting drunk and think you're going to be all right. Because somehow it just goes and it it does the, the moral inhibitors, the nerves that, 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 that got something to do with morality, it just chills that chills that out and you just become a a, a brute beast now y'all are like well, I don't know that don't happen to me drink enough alcohol and you will you will you will see don't do it though just take my word for it if you ain't doing that but that was something that I needed the most high to deliver me from and I thank the most high for it you know because you know, you're not going to be able to blame it on the alcohol. Anybody else? Yeah, I kind of I got something. What you got? Like, all right, you know, in the old days, right, they had, like, they seen, like, the miracles that God was doing for them and, uh, like, you know, see splitting and, and they're like, you know, they see the angels will come down and be like, nah, don't do that. Go this way or, okay, that don't happen now, right? But we like strictly on, on the voice. Like we, we listen to a voice, right? Is that, is that like the same thing? Yeah, it's, he, he said that he was going to deal with his people different. You know, he dealt with us through signs and wonders, and he spoke to the fathers, to various, uh, matter of fact, let me get a scripture. Get, get he, Hebrews, Hebrews, the first chapter. It says, the most high, who at sundry times, that is, in many portions, in different, different times, different periods of time, and in divers manners, that is, in a variety of ways, speak in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. So the Most High dealt with the Most High, I mean, dealt with the people through the prophets, and, and, and he spoke to the fathers by the prophets through signs. You know, he said he put a spirit, and he, he split the Red Sea and all kinds of stuff. He says, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Uh, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Uh, it says, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So, right now, let's check it out. He's speaking to us in these last days by his son. So that means that it ain't no prophets. People talking about I'm the prophet of the Most High. Elijah was the last prophet. Whatever. The 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 Lord is speaking to His people through His Son. So if anybody is bringing anything spiritual, then it's the Son of the Most High. 
manifesting. So he chose another way. Now it says we're saved by grace through faith. So he, the, the reign of the spirit is different than the early reign. See, because the spirit had not yet come uh, in the capacity that it came after Christ died. See, it's different prophets would get anointed for short periods of time. The spirit would be upon them and they would do certain things. But he said in the last days, he was going to pour his spirit upon all flesh. So it's, it's, it's a difference on, in how he's dealing with us now. It says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being much made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So he's saying that the sun is the is the brightness of his glory. In other words, when the character of Christ is manifested in a body. That's actually the glory or manifestation of the father. So the most high is dealing with us different than, he, than he's dealing. With. And the deep thing about it is just as intense as it was back then. though, Because when you get born again and your spiritual perception opens up, you see things on a real crazy level. You know, you start seeing the activity of multidimensional evil beings up in your zone. You know, they start talking to you. And, you know, you start to realize that, hold up, I really am in a spiritual battle. Like, it really, like, at, at, at first you're going to start thinking that you're crazy or you'll be like, hold up, did you see that? Am I the only one that saw that? And then after a while, it's going to be a part of your experience. You just going to know. You just going to know when you're dealing with it, because you're going to. It's, it's going to be. It's going to become your way of life as you get quickened or made alive in the spirit. See, because the more you can see, the more they can see you. That's why it says. Um, he told Peter, "On this rock, the Son of the Most High, being revealed." To the individual, he was going to build his church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. So when you get baptized, when you get filled with the spirit of the son, when you get born again, then Satan is coming after you. See, because also Satan is coming after you because the, the fire, we're, 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 uh, we're purged in the fire of adversity. We get molded into the image of the sun through adversity. So once you become born again, the demons see you and the enemy attack you. It's going to happen. Expect it. Expect to suffer. Expect your whole zone to be flipped upside down. Expect it because that's a part of the fire that molds us into the image of the sun. So the Most High is dealing with us in a miraculous way now. It's not, it's not in the same way. When he established the church in the earth at the day of Pentecost, and when the disciples in them was rolling, it was a whole lot of physical manifestations. You figure on the day of Pentecost, it said over 3,000 souls was added to the body of Christ. And then... You know, individually, you know, I've seen some things that was pretty rac pretty miraculous. You know, stuff that I just knew that that was definitely the most high. And some stuff that I knew that that was a demon. Anybody else got anything before we wrap it up? Uh, that was a good scripture. What you got? Uh, no, I said that was a good scripture explaining what the question I had asked. Right, that's what's up. Well, because, you said, because, uh, question. You know what I was thinking? I was like, um, you know, Abraham or whoever, they, they had like, 
evidence. Like they had like proof, and it was there in front of their faces, so it would seem like it would be easier to follow the most eye. But it's like I'm like, man, I don't see none of this stuff. You know, I don't see no angels, none of that stuff. But I believe, so I thought it felt like I was kind of crazy, because like. Like you were just saying, like the more you you realize the truth, the more you see spirits and demons and stuff like that. And I've been having to talk to them, and like I be talking to myself a lot, man. Now more than ever, like nah, you can't do that. And I be having to pray, like man, that ain't me. That ain't that ain't just I. I couldn't have just thought what I just thought. You know what I mean? Right. So I was just hoping I wasn't the only one feeling like that. So check this out. I'm gonna show you something else. Get Galatians the third chapter. See, because the deep thing about it is the most high established the gospel of Christ in the beginning by faith. But then uh then the law came, but the law didn't didn't disannul faith. Did the law didn't disannul the promise the most high given us given his word and us believe it. See, he established that with Abraham. Now, Galatians 3 and uh, 22, it says, but the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Christ might be given to them that believe. So now check it out. It says, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. So before faith came, the Most High was dealing with us according to the flesh. So he had to do physical things in the earth because the faith of Christ was not established in the earth. You know, all those cats that was rolling under the old covenant before Christ came, they was believing in the promise that would come. But the manifestation of the spirit of Christ was not there. They was rolling straight off of the promise and them believing. And their faith identified them with the body of Christ before Christ came. Just like our faith identifies us with Christ, but we're just looking back. They were looking ahead, but it was the same faith. Those that had faith were sealed in Christ. But the Most High said he speaks about the former rain and the latter rain. So then you know that the spirit is going to be is, is going to be uh, dealing in two type of ways. You know, so back then, they was in the flesh. But those that believed the words, because um, another one, as a matter of fact, get um, Hebrews, Hebrews, the third chapter. Hebrews, the third chapter. Um... Dang, I forgot what I was going to say. Hmm. You talking about faith? Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's, it's coming back. All right, check it out. This is Hebrews, <laughs> Hebrews three. Now check this out. This is the this is this is the way the Most High was dealing with them back in the day, but now they was looking ahead. To, to the faith that was going to come. And they believed the word that they heard. And that was, a, that was accounted to them for righteousness. That's what made them a part of the body of Christ. Their faith in what was going to happen. The thing that makes us a part of the body of Christ is our faith in what already happened before us. But it's the same faith. Now check it out. It says... 3 and 7 says, Wherefore, as the Holy Spirit saith, today, if you will hear his voice. Now, he's quoting a scripture that was 
that was that came that Moses said to the children of Israel. He said, today, if you hear the, the voice of the Lord, don't harden your hearts. He says, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me and proved me. So he says, don't harden your hearts the way they did in the wilderness when they came out of Egypt. Says verse nine, when your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my work 40 years. So they tempted me and they kept tempting it. And every time they tempted him, the most high showed that he was faithful, showed that he was faithful to his word. And they still doubted it. He says, wherefore, I was grieved with that generation. They irked me and said they do always err in their hearts, in their mind. They always change in their mind. He says, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. He says, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living power. So anytime that we sin against the Most High, that we choose to sin, then that's an evil heart of unbelief because we don't believe that a judgment is coming. We don't believe that the Most High, the eyes of the Lord are upon us. He says, um, but exhort one another daily while it's called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness or the delusion of sin. It says, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. So when we come to the waters of baptism and we have faith in Christ, we have to hold that, we have to hold that, that confidence that we have in the faith of the operation of the Most High, we have to hold that to the end so that we can fully manifest and partake in Christ. He says, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they heard, did provoke. So they heard the word of the Lord. But they didn't believe it. He says, how be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses? So he said, he said, all of them doubted at some point. But he said, but with whom was he grieved 40 years? Uh, was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? So the ones that he was grieved, see, some of them got it together. They believed what Moses was saying. And those that believed entered in to the most high's rest, entered into the promised land, entered in to the kingdom under Joshua, which is Yesh which was Yeshia, which was a type of Christ. So he showed us that example after the flesh. All those that believe entered into the promised land to take to inherit the promise under Joshua. All the other ones, they died in the wilderness. He says, but with whom was he grieved for the uh, says, and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So just like the word is being preached to them, it's being preached to us. They was just looking ahead, we looking back. But either way, we have to believe that the word is true. And we have to choose accordingly. If I believe that the word is true and that these words are telling me to live a certain kind of way, if I believe that, I'll do it. If I don't believe it, I won't. 